Hi guys, in this lesson we will learn to solve systems of polynomials. Now in the past we have learned about solving systems of linear equations. So we had um, straight lines and we were trying to identify the point of intersection. You know, maybe it was going to be 2 comma 3 or something like that. Um, but we only dealt with linear. Now we will be dealing with other things. So if we have a quadratic equation, then we are talking about a parabola. And so we might have a system that is quadratic and linear. And uh, so we would be looking for the uh, two points of intersection, um, you know, or it could be only one point of intersection if it was a tangent line. Okay, and we will also look at things like um, a system of two quadratic equations. So if I had uh, a system that was two parabolas, you know, it might be something like this. And we'd be looking for the points of intersection there. So um, we're basically upping our game from simply dealing with uh, intersecting lines to now dealing with different types of intersecting polynomials, lines, parabolas, uh, maybe we'll even get to cubics, who knows. Um, but the adventure continues. All right, let's take a look at number one. Um, the first thing you should do is identify what type of polynomial you're dealing with. So this first one, we see that it is quadratic, so we know that it is a parabola. Okay, the second one um, is linear, so we know we're talking about a line. Okay, so we're talking about a parabola and a line. So, you know, it's this type of thing that we're dealing with. Potentially two solutions, you know, depending on how it goes. Okay, could be one solution or no solutions if the line were to miss completely. So we'll see, but it's good to have the big picture in mind. Um, now, we've learned about substitution, elimination. Um, most often, in a situation like this, substitution is going to be the way to go. Um, for example, in this case, I mean, look at these two uh, if I wrote them side by side. I have y equals 5x plus 1, all right? And then I have y equals x squared plus 5. When we do substitution, um, we try to get one variable by itself. Well, we already have that. So then we take the expression that the variable is equal to, and we substitute it into the other equation for that same variable. Um, if I do that, then this equation becomes 5x plus 1 equals x squared plus 5. All right, now we have no more y's, we have only x's. So we should be able to si solve this. Notice how we have two different kinds of x's. We have a linear term and a quadratic term. So um, whenever I see that, I know that we'll need to get 0 on one side so we can try to factor or use the quadratic formula. Um, I like to keep my x squared term positive. So I am going to subtract 5x from both sides. Okay, I'm moving everything to the right, um, and I'll just have 0 over here. So that would cancel these out. And I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and that's going to cancel these out. Okay, so that's going to give me 0 over here. And then I'm going to have x squared, all right, just brought that down. Um, the negative 5x doesn't have anything to combine with, so I'm just going to bring down the negative 5x. Okay, I just brought it down right there. Um, now, the positive 5 and the negative 1, uh, I'm going to combine those, and that's going to give me positive 4. Okay, so just want to be clear where each of these terms is, is coming from. Okay, this guy, I just brought it down. Okay, by now you're, um, you're very clear what's, what's happening here. And um, I'm sure you don't care if I put the 0 on the right instead of the, of the left because that's what we're usually more comfortable with. 
So I'm just going to switch around and throw the zero up on the right hand side. Okay, so this is where we would uh, go ahead and try to factor this. Trinomial, okay, a binomial times a binomial. You see x squared, you should be thinking, oh, x times x. You're looking at this 4, you should be thinking uh, two possibilities here. Either this is going to be 2 times 2, or it's going to be 1 times 4. Um, now, keeping an eye on the middle term with a negative 5, uh, the 1 times 4 option should be looking a little bit better. So let's try that. So if I do 1 times 4, now remember the key for factoring is inner plus outer equals middle. Let's write this down. Um, in fact, I'll use the uh, same color as the middle. We're shooting for negative 5x. Now inner, I have 1x. Outer, I have 4x. I'm trying to get negative 5x. Can I get it if I have the signs right? Sure, if I have a negative 1 and a negative 4, that will make negative 5x. So that means negative 1 and negative 4. Um, we have to check one last thing. Are we getting the positive 4 here? Uh, yes, a negative times a negative is positive, so we're good. So we have factored it. Um, now we can set these two factors equal to zero in order to solve. Okay, so I'm just going to set x minus 1 equal 0 and x minus 4 equal to 0. So if I add 1 to both sides, that will give me x equals 1. And if I add 4 to both sides, that will give me x equals 4. So uh, these are the x values that we need. Um, but we also need the y values that go with them. All right, so let's do some work over here with the y's. I'm um, just going to change colors because I'm bored of blue is all. I'm going to try gray. So I, I like to make a t-chart, Okay, which would be like this. Um, so I'm going to make a t-chart for my x's and y's. Now, so I have uh, my two x values of 1 and 4. I need the y values that go with them. Um, so using the equation y equals 5x plus 1, um, I'm going to get a y value here if I do 5 times 1 plus 1. I'll get this y value if I do 5 times 4 plus 1. So this is just 5 plus 1, uh, which is 6. And this is going to be 20 plus 1, so that's 21. So that gives us uh, two solutions, um, 1 comma 6 and 4 comma 21. All right, um, so that's the final answer. Now, I'm always very curious to look at what actually happened. I like to graph them electronically. Let's use the TI-84. OK, so um, let's see. We had x squared plus 5. That's our parabola. So here's uh, x squared plus 5. All right, and our other equation was 5x plus 1. All right, so 5x plus 1. Let's take a look and see what we've got. OK, so we have this. It's a little bit hard to see. I'm going to adjust the window. Um, I'd like to see a little bit higher. When it starts out, it's only a 10 by 10 window. So if you hit the window button, you can adjust this. Um, the y value, um, I know it's going to go up to 21 at least. So if I go down and set the y max, to something like, I'll say, 30. Let's see what we've got so far. OK, so that gives me a, a pretty good view of what we're dealing with. So you can see that we have our parabola and our line intersecting like this. So we're having our, an intersection point here. This is our 1, 6. And we're having another intersection point here. 
this is our, and I forgot what the numbers were, our 4 comma 21 um, is right here. This is our 421. Okay, so I just like to get a quick glance at what we're dealing with. But anyway, let's move on to problem number two. Now, um, cl let's classify what we're dealing with once again. This is a parabola, okay, because it's quadratic. And once again, this is a line. So again, we're talking about this type of thing, a parabola and a line. So there might be two solutions, up to two solutions. Um, but let's take a look. Now, in terms of how we're going to solve this, uh, substitution is still looking pretty great. This should be pretty simple. If I have y equals 2x on the one hand, and then I have y equals x squared on the other hand, um, substitution would just be taking this and putting it in. So that's going to give us 2x equals x squared. Uh, again, I like to keep my x squared positive, so my uh, what I'd like to do is subtract 2x from both sides. So minus 2x minus 2x. So that'll give me 0 equals x squared minus 2x. I just write them side by side. And I'm sure you won't mind if I just put the 0 on the other side, which is what we're more used to. Okay, some kids get freaked out. Uh, like, there's no C value, there's no constant, what do I do? But I just give them the hint, uh, what is the first step of factoring? And of course the answer is GCF, greatest common factor. Uh, the common factor here is X, so you would pull out that X. All right, and that's gonna leave you with X minus two. Now, what do you do with this? As always, you set the factors equal to zero. So on the left, you have x equals 0. On the right, you have x minus 2 equals 0. Well, this is the uh, one of our solutions, or the x value of one of our solutions. And this one, we'll have to add 2 to both sides and get x equals 2. So these are the two x values with which we will be dealing. Um, now let's make a t-chart. All right, so we do our x's and y's, and uh, so we have 0 and 2. Okay, if I want the y values that go with these x values, I'm going to use this equation, y equals 2x. So in this case, y equals 2 times 0. In this case, y equals 2 times 2. Obviously, 2 times 0 is just 0, and 2 times 2 is 4. So we have our two solutions, 0 comma 0 and 2 comma 4. All right, and please write your solutions as ordered pairs. Okay, so once again, let's take a look at the graph. All right, I'm going to try using wolframalpha.com. So our first equation was y equals x squared. And to type that in, you have to uh, you have to use a caret. And the other equation was, uh, I believe it was y equals two x. All right, so I'll just hit enter. Let's see what Wolfram Alpha has to say. Okay, so um, this is giving us a pretty good graph of what happened. So you see the parabola went like this and the line is cutting across it so it ha we see the intersection here at 0 0 and our other intersection here at what was it um, it was 0 0 and 2 4 okay so there's our 0 0 and our 2 4 alright so that's the big picture but for now uh, let's go back and handle number three all right, actually, this video is long enough, approaching the 15-minute mark, so this will be a good place to stop. Um, I will pick up with number three on the next video. See you on the next video.